Let's take a look at the shipping module functionality in Job Pro. So while we're on the home screen, one option we have is to take a quick look at any outstanding shipping records or current shipping records in the system. So if we click on the quick view arrow, we can see then here's the current list and then we can click on one to view that shipping record. Or alternatively, we just click on the shipping module up the top. So the shipping module can cover outgoing shipping to your customers, for example, incoming shipping from suppliers, and also drop shipping, which would be from your supplier to your customer. The shipping records are quite often created from other parts of the system automatically. Like, for example, you might have a purchase order to your supplier, and you want to track the shipping of that or those items coming in. So you can create a shipping record from a purchase order. So let's say we have a purchase order here and we can see this specific one there was a shipping record created to track that coming in and it actually was received and now there's a balance of zero. So if we create a quick purchase order just to show you that, we specify the supplier, we'll add a product put in a quantity. Now all the purchase order functionality is covered in a lot more detail in a separate tutorial. But just to give you a quick idea of the way that you can create shipping rec records related to a PO. So one option is that you, you're tracking shipping in advance. So something that might take a number of days or a week or two to actually arrive. You want to track and see where that is. You can then interact with the carrier website like DHL or any of these carriers that you can you know, interlink with their websites using tracking numbers. You can do that from within Job Pro. So let's say we want to create a shipping record in advance to track. So we can click in here and put in a quantity of two, click OK. And then if we look at the shipping tab, we can see that there's a shipping record being created. So we can view that. And now we're looking at the shipping module or where we could, for example, on the tracking tab, specify who the carrier is, put in a tracking number, and if that was a valid tracking number, then you'd see you know, relevant information over here in the web viewer. So we can click on the icon here to view a full screen, and if you've got a larger monitor, you could just open up the size of the Job Pro window so you can see the full web page. But you can interact then with that website from within Job Pro, so that's useful. So once this shipping is received, we can click complete. And that's going to generate a stock movement, so we click continue. And because this item is tracked by serial numbers in the products module, we're going to generate the serial numbers or enter in the serial numbers here. Now it's also saying that this shipping record was created from a purchase order which is now fully received. So we can automatically set the status of the PO to received. And we can see here that this shipping record was created from a purchase order. And if we go back and look at that PO, we can see that that is now actually complete. Status is set to received. And on the line entry, there's no balance left to be shipped and no balance left to be received. Now the alternative to tracking shipping in advance is that if we had a PO and we simply set the status of the PO to be received, it still creates a shipping in record, but it creates it in the background. So you don't need to go into the shipping module and set that to complete. It literally cr sets the status of the shipping record to complete as well. So the purpose of that is that the shipping module is used for any outgoing and incoming movement of goods. So from a stock tracking point of view, everything is done using the shipping module. Now you also have the ability on a PO to do a return. So let's say one of these items was faulty. We can click on return. We click on one. And then we can specify the serial number for the item that's faulty. Click continue. Now what that has done is that's actually created a shipping out record, which is flagged as a return. So if we have a look at that, 
that shipping out record is also set to complete because it's basically going out. You can print the document. You might want to send that with the carrier. And it also includes the serial number of the item as well. So you have the ability in setup to specify that if there's items on a shipping record, whether they're incoming or outgoing, that are tracked using serial numbers, and you've already specified the serial numbers, well then when you print a shipping record, which in this case it's a supplier return shipping record, that it includes the serial number on it as well. So the other area on a purchase order when we're creating a shipping record from a PO is that let's just put in supplier but we're going to specify that we're going to drop ship this direct to the customer. So we'll turn on drop ship, we'll specify who the customer is, we can change the address or the contact if we need to from here, we can also view the address or view it in your browser. So in this case if you've got multiple stock locations they don't actually become relevant to a dropship PO or a shipping record that's a dropship because technically you don't actually receive those items into stock. But if you have an item on a PO that's going to be drop shipped that's tracked by serial numbers so let's put in a quantity of one for this that we're going to drop ship straight to the customer from the supplier. If we then create a shipping record to track this we put in our quantity and click continue. It's asking us even though we don't receive this item into stock it's asking us would we like to basically add this item into the system so we can track the serial number for that item. So it won't increase the stock quantity it just means that this item is flagged to the customer's record and then we can track that maybe for example we might have to do a repair on it or maintenance of its equipment or something like that so if you want to introduce that into the system we click yes and then we can enter in the serial number for that item and then we can specify to mark the status of the PO as received we click on yes because the original PO is fully received now at this stage well technically what's happened is it's been drop shipped to the customer so if it hadn't been fully sent to the customer at that point we could have left the status to uh, just on order or shipped okay so the next thing is that if we have a look at the shipping tab on the PO we can see the shipping record that's been created so let's go into that shipping record and we can see then that this is a, a drop ship shipping record it's already been set to complete by the PO so you don't need to go into the shipping module for certain areas that actually create shipping records it's usually only if you're tracking the shipping of items either coming in or going out and, and you also have the ability to use the tracking functionality where you can specify the carrier and the tracking number and then you can interact with their website so also on the tracking tab you can specify things like the method, the date received, who was signed by at the customer's end. In relation to setting up carriers and linking into the carrier's website, what you do is in setup first of all, you click on lists and menus and if we scroll down to the shipping carrier tracking option and in here there's some sample carriers and tracking URLs for those carriers. Now you can enter in your own in here as well but you need to get the, the relevant URL from the carrier on, so that this system knows how to interact or display the relevant web page for that carrier's website. So here we have an example for DHL as it includes then the tracking number at the end of it. So there's a message here that says include the merge tracking number by entering the merge symbols with tracking number. So basically the less than symbol twice and the greater than symbol twice. And what that does is it uses the carrier's URL 
and puts the tracking number from the shipping record and automatically displays that information from the carrier's website within Job Pro. So once you've set up your carriers in here, what you need to do then is, for in the company module, you'll set up your suppliers that are essentially the same carriers. So if we do a search, click on find, we click on supplier, and let's have a look and see what carriers we might have in the system, just to give you a, an example. Okay, so we actually have a few carriers here. So for example, UPS, you'd create a supplier record, you'd specify the company name and address if you need to, but over on the bottom right of the shipping tab, you'd specify that they are a carrier, and then you need to link it to the shipping tracking option that you'll have put in in setup. So based on that link, if you then have a shipping record and you specify the relevant carrier, so the carrier is also displayed up here, well then it knows how to display their web interface in, within Job Pro. So that covers the tracking options in the shipping module. Now this could be an incoming or an outgoing shipping either or a drop ship. If it's a return, for example, you might have a return coming in from a customer. So that will be an incoming shipping return record where you can track that as well if need to. Or it could be a return as we've seen from a PO and it will be an outgoing return to a supplier and it will be flagged as return. So in this case where it's a drop ship, we've got three different entities involved in the shipping record. We've got the customer, we've got the sender, like the supplier, and we've also got the carrier. But in some cases, the supplier might also be the carrier. Let's have a look at the other tab in the shipping module. So in here, we've got various options like in setup, you can specify for every shipping record you create, whether it should default to a line entry or text entry type. So the difference between those is line entry is more about product codes or service codes and descriptions, while text entry is where you can put in paragraphs of text. So also on the other tab, if there's a fax number linked to the customer or it could be supplier, then that will display in here and you can create a fax from here. You can also put in a heading on the printed shipping record and you can also specify to use own letterhead. So if you want to print the shipping record or a shipping note onto your own pre-printed stationery, you can do that as well. And then also in setup, you can specify for every shipping record created what to call the custom one, two, and three field names here. And then we have our standard communications portal that you'll see in every module. So any communications relating to the shipping record which they could be general notes or emails sent out, letters or faxes created from the shipping record, or just general messages to other internal Job Pro users. Any communication then you'll see on this tab. So we have our list screen as well in the shipping module where you could pull up a found set of shipping records, sort by them by clicking on the column headers, and also print a list as well that you have in the current found set. So on the options tab in shipping, we've got various find options, customer related reports, including area reports. So you can set up each customer's area in their own company record. And then using that data, you can group reports by area. Also reports by product, detailed and summary. Now products can also be services. And also you've got reports by category as well. So when you set up your products and services in the products module, you can also assign a default category to those, or based on the category that you might have been entering within the line items of the shipping records, you can get reports based on the category types. So over on the middle part of the screen, for the current 
shipping record we're looking at we can print a shipping note email a shipping note we can print or email them in a different language we can print a label using the receiver shipping address or using the invoice address in this case because it's a drop ship we can also create email sellers and faxes and also create a sales invoice from the shipping record from here but you can also do that on the actual data entry screen and then on the right hand side for the found set of records that you currently have in the shipping module you can print shipping notes print a mini list which is like a small report with the text small on it print labels using the receiver shipping address or print labels using the invoice address for all of the found set of shipping records so just to finish off various parts of the system like a customer screen in companies or in contacts or in jobs and in products as well you'll see a shipping portal so for example if we go into a supplier and we're looking at the shipping tab for a supplier we can see any shipping records relating to that supplier whether it's an outgoing shipping incoming or a drop ship we can also see the carrier from here as well so if a carrier in this case this record is a carrier and the reason why you can see these shipping records is because they're the carrier but if we have a look at another type of supplier that's not necessarily a carrier we can also see the shipping records relating to them and here we can see if those shipping records were linked to or created from a purchase order and when that purchase and if that purchase order has also been fully received at this point as well so you have the same functionality at the context level well actually in context it's just customers so it's just the company's level but also in the jobs module we've got a shipping tab so any shipping records that are linked to a job you can see in here or create shipping records and also in the products module we've got a shipping tab so for a specific product you can see any shipping records where that item was included on the actual document and just to finish off as well in sales invoices you have the ability to create a shipping record for a sales invoice that's created in here in this case the sales invoice has already been shipped but also in the sales orders module you have the ability to part invoice and ship from a sales order and you've got a separate shipping column here so you can see the quantity that's been shipped and the balance remaining to be shipped from a sales order now there's a lot more information included in the relevant video tutorials for the sales orders module so there's, we've no need to necessarily go through it here but a sales order has the ability to create a part invoice and ship or a full invoice and ship relating to the details on the sales order so you can do that from within here so that covers the shipping module functionality in JobPro